Um, I actually have two poems tonight and I wrote them this week, so the first is untitled but it's to my dad. One month has passed since your 80th celebration, yet the sweet scent of clove dusted honey ham waffles through the walls of my kitchen. I reluctantly took down the banners today, prayed to a god I'd be granted another time to dance in celebration. Family, friends, music, crack, storytelling. At the Shenakee performed cap in hand, my dad followed the recitations at live, echoing to my ears delight, mapping a time and space I never want to pause. Thank you. And my second poem was um, kind of um, triggered by um, an another actually milestone this week. Uh, my son was 21 on Friday. So it's, um, I've no title to this point, but um, it's kind of in his honour. Pale pink powdered petals fell in my sleep. I picked them up and counted 21 I've left to keep. Scented this grey morning in celebration of your birth. 21 years, is it such a very long time on earth? Will candles grace your table? Or red bull shots help blow them out? Who we'll cheer and grant you blessing, whose love will grace about? What colour will you sit from? Who will be among your stars? What terse part crowd will gather round? Who among them knows your scars? Advance, attack each pleasure, pause. It's youth over, now remembered. To add up to the attachments hidden among fiery embers. Thank you. The first poem is called First Shot. Uh, it was the first time I ever fired a gun, the local blacksmith. His name was Billy, he, um, he showed me how to fire a gun. So um, I met him lately and um, at a funeral. So I just remember bringing this one, First Shot. <clears throat> Do you remember the first time you fired a shot? I was 10, old enough to be a boy soldier. Billy and his dad lean, the smith's brother flicked me one dark moonless night. Winter hedges flashed by, edge of town, repositioned by reeds. Flutter of wing, shots ring, doubts sing. Retriever really comes to life, collects prize, drops mallard, sprays lake water laughing. Then Billy places a shotgun in my hand. Did I say he was the best marksman in West Limerick? That his sons and grandsons have shot for Ireland. Make sure it's cradled, welded to my shoulder. I'm expecting the kick, but not the noise. Anvils ring as the hammer descends. Muzzle blast next to my ear. Dizzy. I've never fired a reed gun since. Forging my pat on a different journey. Trying to retrieve little pellets of wisdom. Triggering memories of innocent times. Dream. Thank you. This poem, it happened in, in London, uh, we were on a charity cycle race from London to Brighton, so that's the name, London to Brighton, and I met a girl on that day, it's a while since I met this girl. Love on the rocks! London to Brighton. We met through Jerry Hoban in Derbyshire, just friends until the day of the London to Brighton charity circle. As we put our bikes into Jerry's van, my hand touched your breast, whether by accident or design. For a few short hours, I thought you were mine. Sure. Thousands of bikers, all shapes and sizes, bringing in money for worthy causes. And I had my needs too, as all this time before the deal. We stopped at a perfect English park. There were fire chores and jugglers, and a young boy learning to throw balls in the air. Did they try to match your beauty? Brighton Beach was quite an evening, and as I swam, you left your English shore, fair hair, bare shoulders, and to this day, I don't know why I walked away. There are things in this world, like the boy juggling the ball. Sometimes he holds you with another ball in his hand. You touch for a while, and he goes spinning, flying through the world again. Jerry is in New York now, and you, 
my English rose and know not where. I wrote you a poem once and your letter said your life was happy and steady with my my garden now is a wild Irish rose and so on this summer's day I would not have it any other way. Oh, I read this before loads of times. Father's Day was that Sunday, so I read this to my father, for everybody's father. Father, he was a fine old fellow, a pillar of strength when things went wrong, a quite observant man, worked hard all day long. A few frothy pints, his only luxury, a great provider, harmless, sound. We always had great sport when my father was around. He surely thought of right from wrong, a soul so kind and pure. He loved us all with great respect, deep within his core. He idolised the animals, they were his joy and pride. He was a funny character, full of, deep, full of love deep down deep inside. Oh, it was heartbreaking the day my father died. Although we were expecting it, it was an awful blow. This is for Terry Murray, but she's not here tonight. And I, this happened in Slovenia this time last year. And it's uh, here's to Valley Bollinger for Terry Murray. In Ljubljana, we sat in a new by the three bridges. And in the mid morning sunshine, took our ease, sipped wine and kicked off our sandals. You lit up a cigarette and said with a laugh, ah, wouldn't two rich fellas only be the life of us? <laughs> and lost in our own little world, the two of us, among a crowd of strangers, weak from laughter, playing a game of spot a doppelganger. <laughs> Wasn't it gas when that shifty looking fella in the shabby coat who looked just like Barry Bulger, sauntered towards us. And out of the blue, you shouted, Oh God, here's my fella, late as usual. <laughs> I'd like to give a very warm welcome piece for Tom Thank you. I found it late, my wife read this poem two weeks ago, but I think the mic didn't uh, pick up on it, so I'll read it again. Woo! <laughs> it's called Singularity. This poem actually won the Fireball Challenge in, uh, in Cork in Orvail recently, for what it's worth. Where is the legendary bottle bar? The one that you shook over your head. The one before time that fizzed and as you opened it exploded, rocking your place in the heavens. The one that broke the silence and all that was left for you to do to map the land, the seas, the lie of stars. Uncocking the empty, you coloured the world. Luscious green over one little land. Then you made us an island. Mm -hmm. My second poem is, is, is a quote from a local man recently dead. He, he had a cant, he'd say, well that was that. His favourite uh, newspaper, by the way, was the Sunday People. He spent time in England as well. You picked up, mate, the voice of the people. In a pub you fell into in London. But you gave no indication on the nature of your final fall. What would become the talk of the local. Instead, mention casually that the weather that autumn was becoming unusually breezy. And consequently, that you couldn't take out your old bicycle, pedal the beach to your regular, lips compensated, and besides, the wheels were flat. So where would you be going? As it turned out in the event, you concluded, well, that was that. Now, did you have any indication when I checked you in the morning that you would fall, you would fail to get back to the shop that night for something from indigestion? Just in time before I close up, in fact, the pain in your chest demanding that you stagger instead to your cousin, and as it would happen, she'd die of emergency to carry you on a fool's journey 
because that would be that. Nor did you give any indication. The people thrown on the, on the table, your bicycle still punctured, your cousin in mourning, yourself no longer holding up your hand to your chest. And at the moment of your collapse, forever past, that you would finally silence any further need to go along with your old beat. By then it would be obvious, after all, that that would be that. <laughs> Very warm welcome, please, to a Spanish, a subscribe to a Spanish lady, Dania. So this is more a short poem that I write in Spanish. So it's um, Corremos millas, decenas de miles de kilómetros. Corremos sonrisas y corremos tras nuestros sueños cayendo a veces en el error de idolatrarlos, de perseguirlos tanto que acabamos perdidos en la carrera, desayunos que dejamos escapar, sonrisas que preferimos perder para no caer atrapados en ellas. Corremos, caemos chocando presas de nuestras ilusiones y luego nos levantamos cubiertos de cicatrices. Quisiéramos que todo fuera más sencillo, que todo viniera más mascado y a veces nos ahorraran ciertos silencios. Otros, en cambio, nos gustaría que fuesen eternos. Point fragments. It happened that morning. Left the table of her sister. Right. Returning to her her gift of light. She spoke with a loving wisdom of all that was to begin anew. Through a wide open street full of air, I walked in the company of strangers who unknowingly were friends. And as a stranger among stranger friends, I nodded my well wish from the depth of my heart's ache. With the life of breath I wept, the life of breath permeating the walls of buildings, caressing the ivy leaves, feeling their way onto the life of shop fronts, kissing the texture of windows, shading lovers into secret perfumes, a reminder from the present of the what is, a fixture nature designed interiorly for the walkabout room in the world of things. In a silence too awe-inspiring for words beneath the monastery of sky. It was here I got to thinking about you and the news of your orange dress, a polka dot of music, the music of what was and could never be again. It was not Sunday, and the street <coughs> was as full as the street could be. Yet there is something to live for in these rooms. These rooms of our growing old, together. In these rooms where the moon looks down on the jazz-colored breath of your hair. Cheers.